I'm not an expert, but I am an expert in my experience. I'm a survivor myself. I remember how challenging it was to come forward and to have to take the stand and talk about your experiences. Try being in a courtroom with your mother and explaining what you drank the night that you were assaulted. So for me, this conversation is about what are we doing to challenge these lies that rapists and their apologists use in order to not um, really fulfill accountability. Senate Bill S6679C, which was sponsored by Senator Alessandra Biaggi, is looking to close voluntary intoxication loopholes in penal law. What is a voluntary intoxication loophole? So it's actually a lie, not a loophole. And the reason I say it that way is because currently the way that the law is written in New York State, if you were voluntarily intoxicated, which means you were drunk, you were high, something, you know, at the time of being sexually assaulted, the law does not recognize this fully um, in terms of what this means going forward for your process. It's surprising to me that this even ends up in our penal code. We are in the post Me Too era of, of language, of conversation about what sexual assault means, and the gold standard for us should be affirmative consent. I know how hard it was to come forward, I know how hard it was to seek justice in the criminal justice system, and that might not be the best fit for everybody. This isn't about saying if you were sexually assaulted, you must do X, Y, Z. It's just a matter of how do we eliminate eliminate some of those barriers right. for survivors to come forward without the stigma or the shame of saying I was intoxicated at the time where I experienced a horrible sexual violent, uh, sexually violent incident. We can develop a playbook for other activists in different communities and different states to say this is how we push, this is how we put the pressure on our electeds at the state level. So here is a chance for us to say we have one specific piece of the law that doesn't match our potential and our ability to really deliver justice. Acknowledging that this has been passed by the New York State Senate already, you're saying that your opponent, Assemblymember Jeffrey Dinowitz, is kind of standing in the way of this hitting the governor's desk. What do you think is holding him up? You know, I'm not sure, honestly, right? Because I've heard from so many people, I've experienced it myself as I shared with you, that we're ready. We're ready to have a conversation about what affirmative consent means. So a piece of this conversation is not only what our legislators are doing, but also what are the kinds of interventions that we're investing in to prevent these kinds of things happening culturally. I think it's really essential that people think of lawmakers not only as folks who you know work on the laws, but that they're also really responding to where we are culturally. I can tell you 10 years ago when I was sexually assaulted, we didn't have this kind of language in the mainstream culture. And so I actually have a lot of hope and optimism about where we can go with this, but it's also essential that we have elected leadership that understands, is responsive to, and is really to, willing to put their bodies on the line to fight for what should be the standard.